In 1932, the Japanese army took control of a sparsely populated region of northeastern China. With only a few isolated villages, Sunwu County would seem to have little to offer, but its open space was exactly what the Japanese wanted. Over the next few years, it would become a fully equipped and fully operational military base with over 100,000 soldiers. In the autumn of 1932, a contingent of the Kwantung Army headed north along the Longshan State Highway via Langman Post, passing today's Zhangjiapu and Yautun on their way to a secure camp in Wujiapu. It was the fifth post on Shunhe River on Langshan State Highway. The Shumbie La River flows through rugged hills of Heilongjiang, south of the border with Russia. In the Manchu language, Chun means sun and Bie La is river. The name shows the great respect the Manchu have for the river. In 1932, the Japanese army set its sights on a broad plain along the Shumbie La River. The area is 500 kilometers from Harbin and 100 kilometers from Aihui in the north. Just 50 kilometers to the northeast, across the border river, was the Soviet Union. A confrontation with the Red Army could easily take place along this 38-kilometer border. The Japanese saw it as a place of great military importance and located a northern supply and logistics base here. Within Sunwu lies a small village, so named for the blossoms on the pear trees that dot its hills. Japan's Kwantung Army concealed here and named it the Pear Blossom Fort. The construction of the fort began in 1934 as part of the first stage of the Kwantung Army's line of fortifications along the border with the USSR. It took four years and thousands of laborers to complete. Its key fort, Shangshan, is 40 kilometers away. Impressive in size, it was an important strategic base for two divisions, making it the command center and troop center of the Kwantung Army in the north. Of the four northern ports, Pear Blossom and Sun Wu would be the most closely intertwined. そこから、その、ソ連軍が砲撃及び川を渡ってくる攻撃をそこの、あの、要塞で支えようという考え方です。Shengsheng port was a key facility, flanked by further positions to the left and right. One side housed the headquarters for the Shengwu County Regiment, with ammunition and munitions storage areas. To the east and west were the officers' quarters. There was even an entertainment venue. It could store enough supplies to meet the needs of the more than 2,000 personnel residing there. 
One area of the installation was equipped with nearly a hundred different kinds of fortifications or weapons emplacements, which remain in relatively good condition. Shenzhen Fort was built into a mountainside, and much of it was underground. Digging tunnels meant dealing with technical problems surrounding underground communication, illumination, as well as water and drainage issues. But the tactical capabilities are also quite exceptional. Yale Highland is the core of Shenzhen's defenses, featuring concentrated firepower from four artillery batteries every 20 meters. A 10 meter deep elevator could raise or lower the cannons. Japanese soldier Mohai Kitahara was stationed there and wrote a book called Blood of the Amur River. He describes how pressing a button would raise or lower the cannons. Even shells fired by Soviet tanks were not a threat. At the northern front of the China-Soviet border, Hei He Fort, Ai Hui Fort, and the second stage of Fabie La Fort were all constructed while work was underway on Peach Blossom. <laughs> Nikanjana 包蛋壳子 these two defensive placements, hidden deep in the mountain, belong to the Hei He and Ai Hui forts. Together with Pear Blossom Fort, they were the first batch of forts in the north constructed by Japan's Kwantung Army between 1934 and 1939. Soon after, from 1939 to 1940, as a supplement to the first round of forts, Fabie La Fort was constructed to close the gap to the north. In the border river basin, these four fortresses faced the Soviet Union across the river and represent the military front line of the Japanese along the Sino-Russian border.
そのその陣地というのは第四軍というのが担当してたんですけれども第四軍の司令部があの孫悟というところにありましたでまあそれを孫悟エリアというふうに言うならば孫悟エリアの中心は愛軍陣地ですねでそのいわゆる右翼右,右の,あの翼ですね右の翼が、えー、ホルモン人で、えー、左,左の翼がいわゆる国家ホーベラということですねで国立国流行に対して、まあ、こ,こういう形で防衛するっていう。ただ、これは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、ここは、防御苏联进攻，它是起这个作用，啊，那么二线呢，它就是一个军事后方基地，是吧？保证啊，兵员的遣散、集结，是吧？它起这个作用，每个要塞群的后面都有支撑，那么就是城镇构成了一个完整的什么呢？就是呃，综合的军事基地建设。沿江的沿江防线、沿江要塞一侧的孙武，当时就有小小的哈尔滨，大大的孙武之城，所有的粮食、军火作为战略这个基地，呃和战略的支撑，在呢形成了庞大的一个城市化的社会体系。The Manchu Kuo government established Sunwu County in 1937. It became a secret industrial military base for Japan's Kwantung Army on the northern border. Before military exercises commenced in the spring of 1938, the 4th Japanese Army was stationed at Sunwu. It became the supreme command center for all the troops stationed in the north. The area this command covered was extensive. Within an area covering 255 kilometers, a military installation was constructed. It included 25 encampment areas scattered throughout the thick North Mountain Forest. Over 5,000 homes were built. They even had area codes. This area can be built in various buildings. Then you can build a large force. In this small city, the Soviet Union was built in this area. 日军竟然第四军的司令部在这里边，相应的师团在这里边。最高的时候，居然有十万人，是孙吴居民的十倍呀、啊！这个在日本人来讲，这叫军都。Nishinshi Village。Along the Sunwu section of the Beihei Railway, the garrison office in Qingxi are still in good condition. They were both built by Japan's Kwantung Army. From 1933 to 1934, the Japanese made Sunwu their center of military construction in the north and built the Beihei Railway. It was constructed to carry troops and munitions to attack the Soviet Union to the north, but the railway line also carried natural resources south. In 1937, the Japanese army began building military airfields in Sunwu. At Zhengjiapu Airport, the primary runway was 1,180 meters long and 100 meters wide. The auxiliary was 1,200 meters long and 50 meters wide, and the secondary runway was 800 meters long and 20 meters wide. 
The airfield itself featured four towers, accompanied by defensive fortifications, fuel storage, warehouses, and terminals. Japan's famous Mitsubishi Zero fighter planes, along with the medium-sized transport aircraft, were often seen here. Three kilometers east of Sunwu is a rather eye-catching building. Over a hundred meters long, with beige walls and a green granite base, its front pillars are decorated with a tea-colored mosaic. The floor of the lobby and corridors are decorated with colorful tiles. Though many decades have passed, this place still has an impressive interior. The famous army clubhouse was a place of entertainment for high-ranking officers on the northern front. The first floor features a movie theater, cafeteria, restaurant and bar. The second floor has a brothel, known by a rather misleading name, Comfort Station. Today, it is recognized as having been the largest single unit brothel of its kind in Asia. The parties and debauchery are long gone, but the movie theater, luxurious fittings of the ballroom, and reminders of the comfort women who were trained to speak Japanese and sing and dance to Japanese songs offer a picture of life for a Kwantung officer serving in the key military town of Sun Wu. Sunwu developed into a military command center, hosting senior officers traveling between the Manchu Kuo capital and the Northern Front. There was convenient air and rail transportation, as well as an officer's club to watch a movie, enjoy a drink with fellow officers, or indulge oneself at the comfort station. This was a lifestyle enjoyed by a ranking officer at Sun Wu during its heyday. Next to the Shungbie La River, there is a giant six-story concrete building, which remains today one of the iconic landmarks of Sun Wu. During the war, this building served as the largest thermal power plant in North Manchuria. The main frame of the building still remains in good condition. Siemens power generators and advanced power distribution facilities were once installed in the huge pits. Shiao 所以这样的话，它和要塞，包括和它那个军事目的有有直接的关系。嗯，当然，我想孙吴到发展起来以后，要塞只是它集中的一个一个小的一个构成部分。Japanese peace advocate and well-known scholar Yukiko Yamabe has dedicated several years to studying the history of Japan's war against China. She's visited sites in northeast China that the Kwantung army occupied. In 1991 and 1992, she went to Sunwu, 
Many of the buildings she was able to observe left a profound impression on her. そんなに規模が大きくて、しかもこんなに大きな犯罪。Sun Wu was strategically important, and that meant railways, roads, airports, power plants, car dealers, observatories, hospitals, banks, schools, and a flint factory. Occupying over half the land in South Sun Wu, the Japanese built various styles of houses for military, civilian, and business people. There were also brothels, cinemas, a Yasakuri shrine, as well as primary schools for Japanese and Korean students, foreign businesses, shops, and Japanese joint stock businesses. A well-equipped, neatly planned, and military-oriented town grew in the desolate basin of the King An Mountains by the Shunbie La River. Chinese border with Russia and Mongolia and was one of the first fortresses built by Japan's Kwantan army. It was the most important one in the western region and one of the most costly. Its scale was massive, the design was elaborate, but Hailao was an underground city.